read one verse of scripture. Amen. If you have your Bible, I'm going to ask that you will stand with me, turning to Psalm 139. We're going to read one verse of scripture from that particular uh, uh, a verse of scripture. Amen. From Psalms 139. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's good to praise the Lord, but it's even better to worship God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, the Bible says, is calmly for the upright. Amen. And we praise God, hallelujah, for what he has done for us. But when we worship God, hallelujah, when we worship God, we worship God because of praise. Hallelujah. So, uh, Psalm 139, verse 14. Amen. One verse. And the word of God reads as this. I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth this right well. Amen. Hallelujah. God, I will praise you continually. Will your praise be in my mouth? Why? Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Somebody ought to give God a praise. Amen. We thank you for this opportunity to come together as a corporate body, as a living organism, the church, oh God, to worship you. Now God, we understand that if we're to worship you, we are to do it as you have, oh God, instructed us to do it, according to John 4, verse 24. For God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For God, this is our worship and our earnest desire today to give you the true, hallelujah, worship that you deserve. God, simply because of who you are, we give you glory today. We love you, God, and we thank you. We commit every portion of this worship service to you. From this, the call of, oh God, the call of worship to the benediction, God, we pray that you be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's just worship God.
excited to be here and thank you for inviting me.
under the house of the Lord. We are in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us worship Him. Let us worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Let us lay aside every weight and sin that so easily beset us. Every weight and sin that so easily distract us. Every weight and sin that so easily prevent us from allowing God to speak to our hearts. Amen. Let us forget about ourselves. Consecrate on Him and let's just worship Him today. It's understood maybe we have done some things this week that we should not have done. Or we didn't do some things this week that we should have done. Regardless of all of that, we are here today. And let's not let the enemy rob us of the blessings that the Lord has in store for us today. He's able to meet us right where we are. Give him a hand, praise the Lord.
Jesus be a man all around me every day. As we prepare to give a portion back unto the Lord of which he has entrusted to us, let us give as we like to receive. He loves a cheerful gift. The scripture says that he who sowed sparingly shall also reap sparingly. He who sowed bountifully will also reap bountifully. Let a man give as he purpose in his heart. Not, don't give grudgingly, nor all necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Now that word cheerful in the Greek language means hilarious. Hilarious giver. Can anybody know what hilarious, hilarious is? What is it? Give joyfully, yeah. happily. Glory. Give cheerfully. Now, we love the same thing the Lord loved. We love a cheerful gift. But it's not so much the gift that you're giving, more so than the heart of what you're giving it to. Yeah. Amen? So let's give cheerfully. Let's give in obedience to the Lord. As the scripture says, uh, will a man rob God? Now, will you let anybody rob you knowingly? We say God knows everything. So God is not going to let us rob him and get away with it. But he, the question was asked, will a man rob God? And it must have been a response by something like, no, Lord, you know we wouldn't rob you. But he says, yet yeah, you have robbed me. And the people act surprised. Wherein have we robbed you? He says, in time and offering. That's what you robbed me in, as the Lord says. And because, of, because you have robbed me, you are cursed will occur. Not your neighbor. It says you. You are cursed with a curse because you have robbed me, even this whole nation. In other words, everything that's about you has been cursed because you have robbed me. And then he says, bring your tithe into the storehouse that it may be meat in my house. It takes money for ministries to go forward. Yeah. It takes money for lights to be on. It takes money for heat to be in the building. Yeah. Amen? It takes money for ministries to go forward. Bring what? A tithe and offering to store out that it may be meat in my house. Then he says this. A place where you have never said it in scripture before. Prove me now. You will say it the Lord. He said, try me. If you don't believe me, try. Prove me now here what say it the Lord. And see that if I would not open you, not your neighbor, it's you. If I would not open you the windows for the of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Now we usually stop there, but that's the thought of the Father. It says that, and I will rebuke the devourer. Who's the devourer? The enemy. Come, steal, kill, and devour. I will rebuke the devourer 
for your sake. Lord. 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 why you put all this emphasis on the money? Because it takes money for real estate to go forward. And God can make a hundred dollars spend like a thousand dollars. And a thousand dollars spend like a hundred dollars. And plus he says that where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. At one time or another, you can look in folks' checkbook to see where the heart is. But now they got credit card, debit cards, and, and online this and online that. So it's kind of hard to track down the heart. <laughs> And that is, that's 90%. Excluding the offering. Tithe means 10. That not that we do anything that we want to do with it, but we continue to help somebody. We continue to be wise spenders and investors. It's God's. It all belongs to God. He is the one that blessed us yes. with our finances. Bless us with the ability, to bless us with the skill, to bless us with the know-how. It is Thank you, Lord. that have blessed us. Don't you know that if somebody woke up this morning that couldn't move? They had every intention when they laid down last night. Yes. Somebody got 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 money in the bank and got uh, a prestige in the society and, and woke up this morning. And got a phone call and said, we don't need you no more. Got a phone call and said, we just went bankrupt. It is Jesus that makes the difference in our lives. I guess that's all I'm trying to say. Amen. 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 It's Jesus that makes the difference in our lives. Let us look to the Lord. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for this blessed opportunity to give back a portion in which you have entrusted to us. We thank you for the hearts, O oh God, in our midst. Lord, the obedient heart, Lord. And we know, God, that your word will not return to you void. You said it will accomplish that in which it was sent. And your word has fallen on fertile ground this morning. And at this ministry, Lord, continue to win souls, continue to equip the saints for Christ, to continue to enlarge, O oh Lord, the kingdom. We pray that your blessings will continue to rest upon us as we move forward in you. We thank you, Lord, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. At the church, say amen. amen. I see some of you that's over 55 listen to that music saying, what are they playing that jazz for? I know because I, that's what I thought the first time I, they started doing it in here when I heard it. But then I remember this gospel jazz. Then I remember that the song, was, the song said, let everything praise God. Praise Him on the flute. Praise Him on the cymbal. Praise Him on the harp. Then it says, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. So it's all about what the mind is when you're crazy. If your mind is in the nightclub, then that sounds like Amen, 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 amen. Now that was uh, 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 gospel jazz. Now they playing music like uh, uh, just the music. And uh, what's that song uh, like? If loving you is wrong, I don't, we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that kind of music. Amen. Lift them up, choir. Before the choir come, we have a guest speaker with us today. She isn't a guest speaker. She just, she just doesn't live here. She lives in Anchorage. Uh, but she's a member here when she come up here. I was a pastor uh, when I pastored a church in Palm. Uh, the first church I pastored. She and her family, we grew very close. I've known them before we even start pastoring the church. But she has become as, as, as a sister to us and as a, a aunt and, and a husband and uncle to our children. Uh, she is our church accountant. She's the one that keeps the books, keeps us straight. Uh, uh, she is a member of Lighthouse Fellowship. In English, by Pastor Ken Friendly, uh, Dr. Friend Kenley, Pastor. And we're grateful that God has placed a word in her today to bless our souls. Amen. So as she come, come with an expectation. Come believing that God has placed in her a word for you. Amen. So as we pray, as a choir call, the voice thereafter will be that of none other than the Reverend Rosemary McGowan, Lighthouse Christian Fellowship, Anchorage, Alaska. Give the Lord a hand.
Blessing to Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. I come join God's work. Sometimes it's not always easy. You said it, sometimes it's not going to be, but I'm faith is in him. So, I go and he called me. So here I am. Um, I have a word today. I've been dealing with it for a while. Just trying to put it all together. Never could do it until I got here. So all I'm saying is you hide off the press. So I believe, without a doubt, that this word is for you today. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, your servant is standing before you, Lord. Come and humble, Father God, to, to do your will, Lord. To the deliver a message, Lord God, for your people. A message that will keep you, keep all of us today, tomorrow, and forevermore. It's good for all of us, for our children, our children's children. So, Lord, it's something that we can trust and stand on, Lord God. So, Father God, right now I ask the Spirit to come into this place and have its own way, Lord. Lord, hide me behind the cross. Father, I said everything that I speak, Lord, unto your people, that it will come from the Spirit. Allow the Spirit to speak today, Lord. Have your own way in this place, Father God. And Lord, I pray that well, we know that the word go out and it won't return void. And it will accomplish what it was sent to do, Father. So, Lord God, I have that confidence and trust. So we ask right now, Lord God, that ears would be open and hearts would be open to receive, Lord God. And we just give you all praise, honor, and glory for everything that you do, Lord God, in this place. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. I just want y'all to keep praying with me now. I'm not one of those fancy preachers. I'm just, I'm just simple. Simple words. But I want to bring it to you like he gave it to me. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to Proverbs. I don't know if they have it on the screen yet. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We all there to say amen. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path go straight and he will make that path right. Yes. Glory be unto God. Amen. Now if you need a subject matter, Is what God's been dealing with me. He said, uh, <laughs> Can God trust you to trust Him? Can God trust you to trust Him? Let me see. I, I, I just don't know why that just, you know, just stayed in my spirit and 
I kept dealing with it. I've been dealing with that for a whole month. And I'm asking, Lord, what, what, what is it saying? What is it? In simple terms, can we trust God? And can God trust you? This is as simple as that. We have a trust problem in today's society. No doubt about it. I have gone and bought things from the store. No sooner than I get it and break down and don't work, you can't trust nothing. <laughs> right. truth, though, you know what I'm saying? And every time you turn on your car, calling out it, calling it back. Can't trust in all of that. You know, and then we can't even trust the justice system. They got the law, they won't use it. Just not Jews. That's true. And now, we have marriage partners that won't trust one another. It's a problem we got. It's a trust problem we have. So now, you know, and I thought about it, you know, we raising our children. The best that we know how. And they are listening to a drug addict on the street before they listen to us. Don't trust us. We have a trust problem. But who can we trust? Well, I'm glad y'all asked that question. Now, I remember as a child, and growing up, we always knew there was a God. But for, for those who still got some issues, whether he exists, I want you to go to Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 1. Because I got some money. So, in other words, I just want to set some things straight. We can't trust God. Yeah. Now, as a child, all I knew what the Word said, and that was enough for me. But it says, in the beginning, God. Now that ought to be enough for everybody. But it didn't stop there. He said he created the heavens and the earth. So when I was born, I got here and had the knowledge. I knew that the earth was here. The sun and the moon was here. I learned that God put it there. He put the stars in the sky. He created all living things. Lean not to your own understanding. 
so you're not that smart. All right. You know, and now he's gone, and he's gonna direct that. You know, I, but the Lord wasn't gonna look for me just because sometimes you gotta break it down. Now, we know, well, I know, let me put it like this, because I, I can't speak for y'all, I'm just gonna speak for Rosemary. Because I know he's been trying to prove in my life. Yeah. I can trust him. Yeah. But can he trust you? Can he trust you? Now, God wanted me to bring this message because he is about to do something on earth. I was not given the details of it. But God wants you to trust him. Whatever he's telling you to do, he wants you to trust him. Okay, now. <clears throat> um, I know that he wants to work through us. He made some promises to us. Are you about, you know, uh, living in promise? Mm -hmm. He made many promises to us. We can receive the promise. He promised many, 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 many things. But you know, we are lacking because we don't trust what he said. We are lacking. Now, let me just break it down to you. We are the children of the Most High God. Okay? Who made that possible? Abraham. Abraham made that possible because he obeyed God. And because of it, he became righteous before God. And we are the seed of Abraham because we believe. Alright, now I want y'all to go on here and we're going to go to the Word. And, you know, one, one thing I do recognize is that um, when Abraham obeyed God, some things started happening. So, what I find in the word, and God was laying on my heart, that a lot of times we don't receive all what God has for us because we don't obey. That's the first thing Abraham did, and I want you to go to to um, Genesis. I think it's the twelfth chapter. Starting with the first verse. and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. Yes. I will bless you and make your name great. And so shall you be blessed, be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who puts you out will cruise. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So, Abram went forth as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And he was 75 years old. The first problem we have is obedient. We have an obedient problem. Because now, Abram obeyed God, left his household, his mother and father, and just got up and went. How many of you would leave just like that if God told you to do something? We, we, we would have problems, huh? <laughs> Go on. We would try to sit down and even have a conversation. And we didn't talk about this. And, and, you know, and, and, you know, we do. That's what we do. Now, I'm in Alaska. I've been in Alaska now 44 years. That was a prophecy that I was living in a foreign land. <laughs> <laughs> I said, 
from what? I didn't know what it was. But God made a path for me to go. See, first of all, when God calls on us to do something, we just do it. We have to just be obedient. So when Abraham obeyed, I call that reposition. Now, Abraham obeyed. He said, go, and I'm going to show you something here. You're going to be blessed. You're going to be up. All of this. So when I came to Alaska, I recognized a lot of times God will reposition you to bless you. Your blessing may not be in Anchorage. It may not be in New York City. But we have to obey because God has made the promises to you and he's going to carry it out. He said, I watch this over my word to perform it. I'm going to see that it happened. If I said it, I'm going to do it. That's yeah. God. But a lot of times we don't get the blessing because we won't obey God's instruction. And that's what he wants me to take. First of all, he wants you to trust in him. Yeah. Now I came on up here. Now all that information you tell me about the last look at him. He said it will be eagles. I see in the world we grew up in like uh, all of those animals he was talking about, moose. They were like our slaves. I didn't know any different. But that didn't scare me nothing. I'm going. And God made a way. Because my roommate had some relatives up here before she got up here. So she came on up here. She was talking to me about it. Like, yeah, you got to be kidding. She sent some flowers and Green grass, <laughs> land of the storm. This ain't a last that's not what I heard, that's not what I saw TV. But that didn't stop me. God took me right on up here. The second day I was in Anchorage, I knew this was my home. I, the Holy Spirit told me while I was driving around the old street looking at all that water that it was prophesied about. I was like, ooh, that's a lot of water. But he said, this is your home. Church, I want to say that I have been, be like my dad, my dad always say, I'm more than blessed. I've been blessed. Yes. He has blessed me. Not only that, I made a way for my folks, my relatives. Mom came on up. Now, she didn't come up and she didn't work and got a good time. And she gets three checks. You know, that might get one. But she gets three checks. My auntie showed up. My sister showed up. Everybody, everybody doing well. And see, God said he blessed you to bless us now. So the blessing just ain't for you. Yeah. He blessed you to bless us. So I, you know, I'm like a Moses. I made a way for the rest of them because I was obedient to God. I was obedient. But I find out time we have problems listening to the word. God will talk to us and more I'll tell you the truth. More things something like you want to hear. You will turn it off in a minute. We have a hearing problem. But Jesus says, my sheep knows my voice. Right. And it will obey. Yeah. So I know I was a sheep. I obeyed. But what about you? God may be telling you something right now to do. But it is not for you to sit there and analyze. He said, just trust. Lean not to your what? All oh, money. Because we, 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 we will try to figure that out. We got to dissect that, cut it up, look at that. No, we got to go and sit somewhere so, you know, somebody can explain it. No. We got to just trust. But anyway, Abraham went on and did what God asked him to do. He obeyed God. By obeying God, he wound up being the father a many, many nations. Yes. Families. He inherited a lot of land. <laughs> Abraham, he was the clan righteous. Now you know Abraham, you know, you know the story about Abraham. Abraham out there lying about his life and going on and all. You know, he was doing all kinds of stuff. But God wasn't looking at that. Because he believed he was declared 
righteous. And that's how you became a child of the most high God, so you believe. Yes. So you were declared righteous. I'm the righteous of God. Let me just say that. I'm just the righteous of God. Yeah. That's who I am. I believe in him and I trust him. Yeah. Believe in him. Right. I know um, God just told me to do something, you know, and um, what happened, I was sitting in my office. There was a window outside, and I saw a building being constructed, and I'm like, what is that building? So finally, when it got up there, it looked like a duplex. But one day, I was sitting there, and the Holy Spirit, like he was sitting on my left side, basically said to me, I want you to put in for that property. I looked at it, I said, yeah, right. Exactly what I said. So I went on about my business. Three days later, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, came back to me and says, I said, put in for that. I said, well, honey, I know they ain't going to say, you're going to put the paperwork in. I'm all excited. I put the paperwork in. Well, see, I was apprehensive because, you know, sometimes parents, I had put in for a loan and it turned me down. So, you know, sometimes you get discouraged. You know what I'm saying? But see, the point I'm trying to make is, but when you obey God, <laughs> Ain't nothing gonna stop me. Ain't nothing gonna stop me. So what I did is, I went on and put in for a property with Countrywide. And I already had a loan with Countrywide. I already had a house with loan with Countrywide. And I'm like, oh, girl. Two months have passed. And I'm all, you know, with them two months, I'm all over down the street and telling everybody, hey, y'all look at my property. <laughs> God is blessing me, y'all. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And, 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 and I called them on a Friday, after two months, they told me, oh, they will be calling you. That's all right. Now, I didn't pick up my mail until Sunday. In the mailbox, they denied me. And I'm like, no, they didn't. <laughs> So now I have to go back and pray, Lord. <laughs> now I didn't ask for this problem. You told me to go and do this. That's right. Now, and that's what I did. He didn't answer me, but I called my real estate agent and I told my real estate agent what had happened. She said, he did what? She said, let me call the builder. And she said, he didn't like Countrywide anyway. Let me call him. And the builder said, go get that pack from Countrywide and go sit over here to residential mortgage. And that's what we did. She went got the paper and we sent it over there. But granted, when they told me from Countrywide how much I needed, I needed like $22,000. How many of you know I had that money? <laughs> oh, how many of you know I didn't have that money? <laughs> but what happened, they said, you got to show that in a bank account, and it had to be no, no, no older than 60 days. I said, oh, yeah, I, I can do that. My name on daddy's account. <laughs> I had a little savings account here. I had a business account. Now, Lord, I didn't have that 22. <laughs> they didn't say, no, I need 34. <laughs> Lord Jesus, you know I need you, Lord. <laughs> now, uh, uh, he just stretched me. That's all. He just stretched me. He just stretched me. That's all that was, you know. But I was in Duke. I was calling up all kinds of pastors. Y'all didn't pray for me. Y'all didn't pray. I was seeding money here and there. What? I believe in it, you know, when you give it, come back to you. 
you will say that horse was not Jesus. You will say that. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now, um, again, God wants to bless us with riches. But, you know, a lot of times we will replace the riches, we will place God for the riches. Sometimes we don't get it. Because God is not going to let something else come before Him. Alright? He gave us children and we started to idolize the children and now <coughs> we don't want to give God a go. He gave us good healthy bodies. And what we do? We destroy the temple of God. The drugs, the alcohol, cigarettes, overeating. All of them things. But God is still God in our lives. If we would yield to Him, He would direct us, our path, and He would bless us. He has a word here. I'm just going to, you know, one thing I do know is that the devil will try to come after you on three fronts. That's for your will. For your help. You want to feel Well, help. What else he did to do? He take your family out. Okay? He would take your family out. He was going to come after you. Those are the three things that's closest to us. And we value that. And they ain't trying to destroy it. You know, we, we won't get disturbed about that. But now, Abraham, the blessing of Abraham. First of all, let's go to Deuteronomy 28. God had made some promises to us. Those promises are ours. Be. If you diligently do what? Well, mine said obey. Same thing. Can we just say obey? But that's what mine said. Because <laughs> we deal with a, a problem. A problem we have. Obey the Lord your God. Be it carefully to do all His commandments which I command you today. The Lord your God will say high above all the nations of the earth. Yeah. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you yeah. if you obey the Lord your God. The blessing will come and do what? Overtake you. In other words, it's going to run after you and it's going to hunt you down to bless you. Uh, Boy, ain't that, that's what it's saying? I, I'm, I'm reading it. If you've got your Bible, that's what it's saying. It's going to come and overtake you and say, blessed shall be you in the city and blessed shall be you in the countryside, you know? And then your offspring shall be blessed. They're going to be blessed through the grounds that you have, you know, and crops and beasts, all of them, they're going to be blessed, you know? <laughs> and your baskets, in other words, all your food in, in the pantry, that's, you're going to be blessed with all of those things. And the Lord shall cause your enemy who rise up against you to be defeated before you. They will come you one way and we'll flee before you seven other ways. Hello. Now this is a blessing to you. This is yours. Okay? This is yours. You gotta know what, what's there. God had already given that to you. You inherit this blessing. Okay? The Lord will command the blessing upon you in your bonds and in all that you put your hands to. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you a holy people. You as a holy people, people unto himself. And as he swore to you, if you keep the 
commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. All, so all the people of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will be afraid of you. Is anybody afraid of you? Well, let me just change it around. Are you afraid of anybody? Okay. The Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the offsprings of your body and in the offsprings of your beast and in the product of your ground and in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Now, this is the blessing. I'm going to read. And the Lord will open for you his good storehouse, the heavens, to give you rain to your land in the season and to bless all the works of your hand, and you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not own. You know what I'm saying? Hello. We have to get in the position to be limited in our hearts. Now, I know we had to start off small, but then come a time when we say, hey, I'm trusting God on this one. The Lord will make you the head and what? Not the tail. And you only will be above and will not be the underneath. If you listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, which I charge you today to observe them carefully, the blessing of Abraham is your blessing. We read it. He made that promise. It is yours. But we have to obey. The blessing is not automatic. You just don't get no automatic blessing. You know, my kids are just not going to get everything they want because they want it. There are some stipulations. You know, there's some obedience needs to happen, so God is not for them. So he, he, we just need to be obedient. Yes. So when I talk to us, does he talk to you? Yes. Huh? Amen. He does. He talks to me. But do you do what he says? <coughs> he really, I, I, I hear him. He talks to me. I was just, <coughs> it was something kind of fun to have this <coughs> about a week or so ago. I came home and just my husband just said something. Just set me off. And I'm like, oh, no, he did. And I'm like, oh, you know, this is one time. I'm just, you know, we're we, we going to have a battle here. And I'm just starting from the stomach. Let me give you the, I, you know, I'm going back to, to before I was, you know, saved. I just need to let that boy know what time it is. You know, he need to recognize it. And it got right here. Got I'm saying it's important to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit told me to uh, Rosemary, you have self-control. And isn't it one of the fruit of the Spirit? Self-control. Well, I didn't want to hear that, but I told you. <laughs> The devil's gonna say some stuff or he's gonna really do it right. Yeah. And the Lord didn't even know, Wilbur, you got self control, and I got it. Because, see, I don't like saying something, then I got to go, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I don't know how to call. No, I don't like that. I don't like to be wrong. I really don't. Glory be unto God that He had given us, He put in us His Spirit, yes. the Holy Spirit. It's our counselor, it's our God. Don't tell me that you can't do the will of God because it's in you. And if you listen to it, you will always be alright. You're going to be alright. And I thank God for that. I thank God. I'm telling you that I can hear Him when He speaks to me. Yeah. It means something. 
in obeying God, God direct us, instruct us to give us a blessing. Bless us to be a blessing to others. Now I know my pleasure got a lot to do. But God talked to each and every one of you. All you have to do, trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus if you just trust and obey. Amen. Alright. So now, um, I, uh, the next thing that I, I remember God was saying is that <clears throat> we have to pass the trust test. In other words, the faith test. When Abraham was old man and his wife too. And he was told that he would have a child because he didn't have a child and he couldn't understand, Lord, how are you going to bless me to have all this, this family here and I don't even have an heir. And in his old age, God blessed him with a child. But it wasn't a hundred, she was nine. Lord, you know, I know Lord ain't do a whole lot of things, but that's not what I want. <laughs> but the Bible says she was so she was so good looking and so young looking that even the the, the Pharaoh wanted her. She reversed age to have that child. God is able to do anything, any. Well, God gave the child. So he he he, he smiled. And he, you know, I'm sure his chest was out too, you know. <laughs> you know, men like to do that too late. Hundred years old. <laughs> That's my chest. From all moments. That's my chest. Praise the Lord. I, you know, I got to shout that a little bit to the Lord. And see, God like to do some things like that because see, you can't get nobody good but God. But now, a faith that had not been tested is a faith that can't be trusted. Right at that? Oh, it's, it's true. See, because Abraham had to be tested, even though he was a righteous man before God. But God knew, but he wanted to test him. And so what he did, he told him, said, well, listen here. Uh, in fact, let us read that. <clears throat> I think that's uh, Genesis 22. Let's read it for ourselves. I don't, I don't like to just keep talking in there. If it goes well, uh, that's what she said. <laughs> now, I got my 22. Genesis 22. First verse. Now it came about after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, he not mine. He said, take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Morad and Morai and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will show the tale, I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and he split wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Now on the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkeys. And I, and I, oh, and the lad, and I, and the lad, <coughs> will go over there, 
and we will worship and return to you. It, it, he said, I, me, me and my, me and my boy. We're going to go over here and worship and, and other we're coming back. But now, Lord told me to do something here. And he said, okay. Uh, Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, and he took two, he took in his hands the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked together. Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, Father, he said, Here am I, my son. And he asked, Behold, the fire and the wood, but that is the lamb. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb mm -hmm. for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walk on together. I'm going to stop right here for a second. You better know who's talking to you. It's important. Because you may hear a voice. Because a lot of people, you know, they're, they're called lunatics. You know, their mind is warped. They hear voices telling, to, telling them to do some crazy things. You know, and I don't believe God is telling, will tell any of us to go and sacrifice our child. You know, I know this happened here, but but I know he knows all of us. But you got to know that you know that you know that was God just said that. You understand what I'm saying? You got to know that. You got to know. But now, Abraham knew something. Even though God told him to go sacrifice your son, Abraham went on. You know why? Because Abraham had so much faith, and I'm sure he was walking up, you know, walking up trying to get to that mountain. Now, I know this can't be true because, see, first of all, I know God had told me that I'm going to have a child, and that child's going to be the heir, and then from him, you know, I'm, he's going to be blessed. And, you know, I, I know that can't be, you know, but anyway, I'm going to go on, but I know he's going to provide that man. That's the kind of faith he had in Abraham. He had that kind of faith. Abraham had that kind of faith in the Lord. So he went on. He went on knowing that I'm really coming back. But he was tested. It said, then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his, his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not stretch out your hand against the lad and do nothing to him. But now I know that you fear God, since you have not withhold your son, your only son, from me. Amen. But now, <clears throat> we are going to be tested. Yeah. Our faith got to be tested. There are some things that are going to come up on the scene, right. Right. and you're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. You're going to have to trust God. Are you going to really be destroyed? And this is what God is saying today, that you're going to have to trust Him. Yes. And see, I know, uh, uh, I, I do believe in my heart that something's getting ready to happen when I was in my spirit. I said, what was it? I just want you to trust me. Everybody, you got to know, you got to trust God no matter what, leading not to your own understanding. Now let's look at Job. Job did nothing. But Job was an honorable man, knew God, and he, he worshipped God. He, 
he loved God and, and, and he loved him so much and even he would sacrifice, you know, and, and give up burnt offerings for his children because they might have sinned. Not that they sinned, but they might have sinned. So he just want to love and bless God. But not of any fault of his own because we have an adversary that goes before the throne of God to and fro. And he's going in and he is making an accusation. But God may say, <laughs> have you tried my servant brothers? Yeah. Have you tried my servant? Right. But he has. So have you tried my servant Job? And uh, you know, say you don't play fair no way. So you know, you know, you know anybody can serve, serve you. You know, you got all this protection around him, and you know, you done gave him all this wealth. And he's a rich man. You know, he got everything going for him. Yeah, I'm gonna worship you too with all of that. But I bet you, if you just take some of this stuff away from him, he will not worship you. So the Lord told us, well, okay, <laughs> Joe, well, just uh, go ahead on, <laughs> but I want you to just go ahead and just uh, mess with his soul, okay? And the first thing he did was take away. Now, see, now, when our wealth is gone, boy, I tell you, sometimes we have our wealth, and sometimes our, our wealth makes us believe that we are somebody. You see? They say, well, I got my wealth. I, I, you know, I got it going on, and, you know, sometimes I, I don't need to pray because I got my wealth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I got it going on. But see, what happened to Job? Job well left. That's the first thing you say to him. Cows. All that. He took all of that. How would you feel once you lost your wealth? Hmm? What would you do? Would you trust God? Would you trust him? What did Job? When they came back to tell so you know, a lot of times, you know, when it's some bad news, there's always somebody there to come tell you about it. There's always one, one left, one left to come tell you what happened. You know, uh, I'm the only one survived, so but I come to tell you what happened. So he just destroyed all your stuff here, you know, you don't have anything. And what would Job respond? Job says, you know, the God I know. You know, naked I came in here, naked I'm gonna leave. Uh -huh. Gonna to me so. Hey, we should have an attitude with our lost it. God gave it to me in the first place, but now I don't know what's on the scene here. I don't know why it happened to me, but one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be like Joe. I'm gonna trust God no matter what. <clears throat> See, because that might be your testing time. You might be in a test. <laughs> And if you fail that test, you can rest assured that another test comes. There's another one coming. But Job didn't fail that. He kept on. He just believed in God. Next thing happened, took the children away. All the children are gone. And, you know, there's always one left, wasn't it? I'm the only one left. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> the children are all dead. Now, I know we love our family. I've had, you know, we've been hearing a lot of that. We've been going to funerals, and I've been to one recently, and this the day I came here, I got a call by my sister in law passing a lot of death. You know, death is going to come. You know that, don't we? We as Christians, we have a job to do, don't we? We have to spread the good news about Jesus Christ so everyone will be saved. But what happened, I find a lot of times that love will die and then we will break down like a freight on a watch. Come on. We know the word. If they in Christ Jesus, you say, God, Is that when we know 
loved one have gone on and you know the life was all jacked up and nobody witnessed to them. You know, you didn't even try. And they want to have you want to wonder, Lord, did they go to heaven? Or did they go to heaven? That's important to know. Lord, that's important to know. So I'm saying to you, as Christian people, we got a job to do. If you can't get to them, you have something powerful than any TNT. And it go all over the town, and you don't have to leave here. And that's prayer. You can pray right here and something happen over there. You got to know that you know God. You got to know that God is able to do everything he said he can do. We need to know, look, we're in the last days. We know that, right? We know that we're in the last days. And Satan is, he's, he's, he's on the job. Believe me, he is putting out some disciples, okay? But now, what are we doing? What do we do? We need to be out there, you know, God's not going to allow Satan to have more souls than he. If he eats and he will, he will make stones into if he makes stones into souls, so that's what he would do. But let's go back to Job. So anyway, when God takes your loved one, trust in God. I had a friend that lost a son and young man, 26 years old. But he was out there in the streets, oh, you know. But all of a sudden he just got in the church and he now going to church and he's really talking to his pastor. But then all of a sudden he died. And she was just distraught by it, behind that. But, but you know what? I'm going to put my spirit. God says, 